and thank you for coming to a session on designing for Joomla, Drupal, and WordPress. I may as well start in the obvious place and introduce myself, and then um, I'm going to ask you guys an awful lot of questions today simply because this is so much a matter of opinion. Um, Joomla, uh, Drupal and WordPress are basically things that I suspect the majority of you guys have worked in and if you do any code at all you'll realize that these are there's no right or wrong answer for most of these things. Uh, people do it in different ways. Um, how many of you guys have actually worked in more than one platform? Have worked in more than simply Joomla? Okay, so those of you guys with your hands up are going to get picked on more than the others when it comes to the questions. Um, my name is Steve and I simply do open source stuff. I'm on the open source matters board which tries to keep the Joomla train from running off the tracks and I've run a company called Open Source Training and we do training for Joomla, Drupal and WordPress. Uh, you can tell from the accent that I'm English originally. Um, I come from a, a small little town in the, on the south coast of England. Um, it is not known for too much um, apart from football hooligans. Um, <laughs> the most famous person in Portsmouth is famous for having tattoos all over his body and yelling at football matches. Um, maybe one day I'll end up moving to a nice town in a few spot. It is. It uh, wouldn't make such a good jumper. <laughs> and at the moment, um, I'm based in Atlanta, uh, in the United States, and that's where our company uh, is based. In fact, we don't quite live in Atlanta. We live up in the mountains of Georgia, <coughs> which is famous for a movie called Deliverance. If any of you guys have seen it, um, it's famous for being a uh, what the Americans call a redneck part of the country. None of you guys have seen the difference. That's where we live. Okay. When it comes to Joomla, Drupal, and WordPress, this tends to be the lazy person's way of explaining it. Um, if someone says what's the difference between WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal, the lazy person's answer tends to be that WordPress is easy, that Joomla is in the middle, and that Drupal is hard. But I was talking to one of the, the guys that runs one of the biggest Joomla um, template companies the other day, and he was saying that the more he worked with them, especially when it came to template designing, the more he flipped things on its head, the more he started to think that WordPress was in fact really difficult, Joomla was in the middle, and Drupal was really easy when it came to template design. Um, he said the more he started to dig into these things, the more the reputations started to prove untrue. Um, have any of you guys actually gone through designing for Joomla, Drupal, and WordPress 4.3? Okay, well, if you do start to do it, um, <coughs> the reputation might not be as accurate as most people think. A 
disclaimer, this is not going to be one of those presentations where I do a brutal smack down of the one that I really like and say that Joomla is far and away the best and that Drupal and WordPress sucks. Um, I love all three of them and in fact because I'm known uh, for running a Joomla company, I'm going to try and be a little bit harder on Joomla um, than I am on the others, simply to try and be fair. They are all really, really similar in a lot of their concepts. They are all modular. You have the content in the center of the page and then little blocks around the outside. Whether it's WordPress, whether it's Drupal, whether it's Joomla, they all work on the same, the same basis of having with Drupal, with having a module, with Joomla, having a component, or with WordPress, the pages or posts in the center, and then having little modular snippets around the outside. And they are all really similar in the way they work as well. HTML, CSS, PHP, they nearly all work on the basis of having HTML and CSS for the framework, and then just putting little small PHP snippets in there to actually put the unique content on the page. So if you were to open up a WordPress file, a Drupal file, a Joomla file, the main difference is simply going to be that little PHP snippet in the middle. In terms of the structure, they are also really similar to the one main difference when it comes to actually finding the templates or themes when you get started is that Drupal actually puts new themes and core themes in a different place. With Joomla, they all go in the templates folder, whether it's Milky Way or Purity or the latest template you've uploaded, they all go in the templates folder. And the same is true with WordPress, whether it's a, cu a custom theme or a core theme, they all go in the same place. Drupal spreads them out. It has a, uh, a file, uh, has a folder specifically for the new ones that you upload. The reason for that is to make it easier to, uh, to update and for multi sites as well. The main file for WordPress and Joomla, index.php. For Drupal, page.tpl. It serves almost exactly the same purpose, it just has a different name then. And the same goes for the CSS. Nearly all of them require one basic CSS file, only the name is different. Joomla calls it template.css, the others style.css. Joomla and Drupal, they both have a really exhaustive table of contents file. Um, how many of you guys have dug into the Joomla template details file? You know that it's pretty much some of the ones for the more complicated templates end up looking like a book. They list all of the files, all of the images, all of the possible options. They list, it's really, really exhaustive. It's essentially a table of contents. Drupal does the same. Uh, the theme name, if it's Garland, it's garland.info. If it's Christopher, it's Christopher.info. But it's exactly the same as the template details file in Joomla. WordPress doesn't have that. It does a lot of automatic assumptions. It assumes that the CSS is in style.css. A lot of it is done automatically there. And Joomla <coughs> sticks everything in the index.php file. Uh, Drupal and WordPress, they split things up quite a bit more. Uh, some people like that, some people don't. We do uh, design classes for all three, and we really get different.
reaction. Some people say, ah, that makes a lot of sense to put all the header stuff in the header file, or the footer stuff in the footer file. Some people's brains work that way, and they like how Drupal and WordPress do it. Other people like it all to be dumped in index.php. Okay, I can start at the top, header, left hand side, middle, right hand side, footer. That makes logical sense. But files, uh, the files for themes and templates are really pretty simple. You tend to have one folder and you tend to have just three or four <coughs> key files. Uh, are any of you guys sitting here thinking that you'd like to learn how to design for any of these three? Any of you guys beginners that haven't tackled one of these? Okay, it, it's really, it's not that complicated. It's certainly a lot easier than starting with an extension, designing a, um, a component for Joomla or a module for Drupal. These templates and themes, um, with Joomla, you can do a template in just uh, two files and one line of code. Um, and the same goes for Drupal and WordPress. These things are pretty straightforward. They tend to be a bunch of files sitting in one folder. Everything tends to be fairly clearly named. Uh, template design is its not a particularly intimidating place to get started. I mean, you know, I discovered something yesterday during one of the presentations and I was saying, this is about 3 o'clock in the morning, I do this in the morning, you know. <laughs> what was it you were looking at? So, what did you think after working from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock in the morning? No, 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 it's, it's, it's not something like much like what it was originally. It, it's not? No, no, it's, no, no, it's, no, it's kind of the basic and the that is quite fast. So, most of the files are they're logically named. Um, if you go into extensions, for example, you start dealing with... To me, being more of a designer, uh, the templates and themes are pretty straightforward. The header stuff, oh, it's in header.php. Um, the footer, it's in the footer file. It's really not black magic. Yeah. Okay. A little bit of technical details. They all have slightly different ways of actually creating it. It's not going to make a a huge difference to those of you guys getting started, but at the expert level, Joomla is an MVC format, Drupal a PAC format, and WordPress an API format. Um, any of you guys who are coders have an understanding of the difference between the three? So, 
If you read through the Joomla code, a lot of it is going to be JDoc. It's going to be specific to Joomla. And in terms of commercial, uh, designing commercially, making a business out of themes or templates, they all approach it in a slightly different way too. Um, any of you guys ever have the pleasure of reading the GPL for your businesses? It's the GPL is the license under which Joomla, Drupal, and WordPress all work. But the GPL is somewhat like the Bible that you talk to a hundred people, you're going to get a hundred different interpretations. And Joomla, Drupal, and WordPress all have different uh, interpretations of how the GPL affects themes and templates. With Joomla, the actual code has to be GPL, but the images and the graphics don't have to be. With Drupal, it's GPL. And with WordPress too. And that brings on some advantages and disadvantages that we're going to talk about later. Joomla is the only one without a themes or template directory. Now, I'm not going to say that gives Drupal a big advantage because the one for Drupal uh, sucks, essentially. Um, have any of you guys been to try and find a theme on the Drupal site? It's pretty hard. They don't do a very good job of it. Um, the one big advantage here probably goes to WordPress, which actually has a pretty good, pretty comprehensive official directory of things. And when it comes to a commercial market, when it comes to actually making a business with themes or templates, there is one big difference when it comes to Drupal, there is very little in the way of companies and designers actually working commercially with Drupal. It's getting more. Uh, the Joomla art guys who are here are going to start selling Drupal themes. Uh, I think Rocket Theme has already started doing it, but it's really early days. Uh, most of the, the Drupal work is done in it's custom work that's done for customers who want a specific thing. There's not much in the way of distribution or sharing. The Joomla market is huge, as most of you guys may well know. But if you think the Drupal market is huge, wait till you see the WordPress market. It's really huge. Um, <laughs> even more companies, even more ideas out there. Um, it, it really gives Joomla and WordPress a huge advantage over Drupal, in my opinion. When you get into marketplaces, um, you say WordPress don't want to have a single still a commercial market providing the office? Uh, there's actually there's actually a the non GPL companies. There's a whole bunch of people in the WordPress market that basically say, very politely, sometimes not so politely, forget you to the official WordPress organization, and they refuse to go GPL um, because they think it will hurt their business. Um, there are pros and cons, and I have a couple of examples later on about the problems this causes for WordPress. Quite a few people have used it. Uh, but now if you compare the model, mm -hmm. is it only the template model or the whole model? Oh, um, <coughs> when it comes to, for example, extensions, selling plugins, um, WordPress says the same thing, that if you are not GPL, you're just completely persona non grata. We're not going to deal with you. You can't sponsor events. But because the market is so huge, there's a lot of people that still refuse to go to GPL. Um, it feels a little bit, and uh, Joomla had a similar debate a couple of years ago, and has more or less got over it. Um, dealing with the WordPress market feels like a kind of ugly flashback to two or three years ago in Joomla. They're still arguing about the things that we 
stopped arguing about it a couple of years ago. Okay, what I'm going to do is a quick tour through the things that are really good and not so good about the different things. And remember, this is entirely subjective. Some of you guys may look at something up here and say, huh, something that works for him doesn't work for me, and vice versa. One of the things that I do like about Drupal is that the actual code they use is really, really simple. If you want to spit out all of the content that you have put into a Drupal site, you need 12 characters. All of the nodes, as they call them, all of the posts, all of the pages, can be put into your, into your Drupal thing with simply that line of code. And it goes for the rest of the snippets too. Um, any of you guys who have designed with Drupal have an opinion about the, the actual PHP used to, to put the content on the page? Okay, if you start digging into it, you'll find it's really pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Print the content. That puts all your content on the page. And the same goes for lots of other areas of the site. Open PHP, print, and then a variable. The content, whatever else it might be, close PHP, and you're good to go. And that stands in contrast to WordPress, which we're going to talk about a little later. Okay. One thing that I really like about Drupal <coughs> is that it has an amazing module called the Theme Developer Module. Uh, those of you guys that do some design work have probably come across uh, Firebug at some point. This is, imagine if Firebug was designed specifically for Drupal. It would allow, allow you to drill down and find lots of information on a very specific basis, but in the Drupal way of thinking. They have a really powerful module to allow people to uh, to debug their themes, to find the information they need. Uh, there's really no equivalent in either Joomla or WordPress for it. Okay. Overrides with Drupal are pretty powerful too. You can pretty much override any part of the Drupal core. Um, an override is simply taking a core file, for example, the way the comments are laid out, copying it into your theme folder, and you're good to go. You can change it, you can modify it, you can edit it, and if you update Drupal, you're not going to lose your changes. Um, Joomla has the same thing. WordPress has uh, overrides too, but with Drupal, you can pretty much pick up any Drupal file put it in your themes, and you'll be good to go. And one feature that Joomla seems to be inching towards, if you've been to the extensions direct, directory lately, you may have found a lot of compression tools to enable people to run their sites more quickly, especially as some of these uh, template designers you probably know the names, start to build more and more complex templates with more and more files. They start to get interested in actually compressing them to make sure it doesn't take a day and a half to load a page. Drupal actually comes with a built-in compression. Um, part of the reason for that is that it spits out a huge amount of JavaScript and CSS by default. And so they thought, huh, if we're going to force people to load 13 different files, we need to help them out in some way. And so they actually have some kind of compression. Have any of you guys tried to use the compression tools available for, uh, for Joomla to speed up some of your sites? Any good? Oh, 
model. So each framework has its own component. <laughs> yeah. Um, Could you pre-manage that from the So Rocket Theme, U Theme, Joomla, they have their own compression. It is. Oh, yeah, it's not standard. Um, Drupal has a slight advantage. It comes by standard, so everyone knows what to use. Um, Joomla is solving this problem, but piece by piece. Uh, Drupal has a really nice inbuilt compression for all of its CSS and JavaScript. Okay, dislikes. I was under the impression that Drupal was quite a long way behind in terms of themes, but in preparing this presentation, I actually started to dig out some numbers and was shocked how far behind it is in terms of the market, in terms of people working and delivering themes. The quick search for WordPress themes, nearly 60 million results uh, for Joomla, about half that number for Drupal, like one fiftieth of that number. Uh, the Drupal theme market is it's pretty immature, to be honest. Um, a lot of Joomla guys seem to be trying to solve that problem by moving their work to Drupal. But there's one way to go. Um, are there any of you guys Joomla theme, theme developers? No Joomla people in here or people from any Joomla template companies? Um, for, those, for those companies like Rocket Theme or Joomla Art moving to Drupal, or to WordPress, they're basically faced with a couple of problems. One with WordPress, the commercial market is completely saturated. There are hundreds and hundreds of companies already producing um, top quality themes and the best ones are multi-million dollar companies now. So the Joomla companies looking to move to WordPress are faced with 500 pound gorillas of existing WordPress companies. Whereas the Joomla companies looking to move to Drupal are faced with a market that doesn't really exist yet. And they're going to have to create that, they're going to have to, uh, to try and get some interest in the market to create it essentially. Yeah, it, the lack of competition is a negative for businesses. It's also a negative for end users too, for those of you guys that buy designs. There's simply not the competition in Drupal to drive real innovation. And if I was to pick a major weakness, I think that would be it. There's just not the, not the competition, not the, the urge to innovate that there is in both Joomla and WordPress. One thing I don't like about the way the Drupal themes are organized is that they have a tendency to basically dump everything in one folder. You will find, often you'll find images, CSS, PHP, uh, all sorts of things just dumped in one great big folder. I suspect one reason for that is that most of the themes are done for individual people. If you have something like a rocket theme template with 30, 40 CSS files, you definitely better put it inside the CSS folder. Or you have a theme with 500 or 600 images, you definitely better put it inside the images folder. Uh, perhaps because there hasn't been the innovation and the, the themes tend to be a lot smaller, they tend to dump everything in one one folder, which uh, can make it a little hard to navigate sometimes. Does it still work? It does. Um, and some of the better ones are starting to starting to organize themselves better. It, I think it's mainly a function of being advanced. As the templates get more advanced or the themes get more advanced, they start to organize themselves better. And there are some areas in which the reputation is true. For the end user, it is pretty hard 
compared to WordPress or compared to Joomla, to actually use a Drupal theme. It's fairly hard to find because there aren't many commercial developers and because the theme directory is very good. So it's hard to find a good theme. It's hard to upload it because you have to use FTP. There's no automatic upload, no automatic installation. And it's also hard to edit. There isn't any, any way to see the theme files from the admin area in Drupal. That's going to get fixed in the next version of Drupal 7, whenever it comes out. They're actually going to have an automatic uploader, similar to the one that Joomla has had for years and years. Well, as Joomla people, we can't get too, uh, too cocky about that, because WordPress has something that's even better. But this is one area in which the reputation is definitely true. Drupal is pretty basic and pretty hard to use at the moment when it comes to themes. You actually have to FTP everything to a particular folder. Nothing's automatic, nothing's particularly easy. When you deal with WordPress, the opposite is true. Have any of you guys been through the process of installing a WordPress theme? What was the process like? So in the back end of WordPress, it gives you a search box, you type in red or uh, summer or corporate, or you can use some tags. It's almost like a little search box. You search for the theme, find one you like, you click install, and you're done. There is really a huge difference here between Drupal and WordPress. Uh, with WordPress, it's easy to find it's easy to upload, and it's easy to edit. They have really easy access to all of the files right from the back end of WordPress there. And they also have an awful lot of innovation, perhaps even more than Joomla. Um, have any of you dug into <coughs> any of the frameworks that are available for WordPress? Some of these frameworks basically, uh, if you think that, uh, that the Joomla templates can get complicated sometimes, wait till you start taking a look at the WordPress themes. Some of them will basically overwrite the whole of WordPress. <laughs> They're basically almost like distributions of WordPress. They will overwrite the SEO, they'll overwrite the output, they will basically customize every last nook and cranny of WordPress. Um, this is perhaps the, the most advanced a theme called Thesis. It has as many options as your average uh, rocket theme or youth theme template, but even more files and even more functionality. As a response, to all of this WordPress uh, innovation, you've seen Joomla companies start to do the same thing. Uh, the Joomla guys did a presentation on their T3 framework. Uh, the Rocket theme guys are developing their Gantry framework. Um, you may have heard the word framework bandied around so much time, uh, so much in the last few months you're starting to get sick of it. Oh, we have a new framework, we have a new framework in Joomla. Um, everyone seems to have a new framework coming out. I think most of them are inspired by WordPress. WordPress has been using these really large and innovative frameworks for quite a long time. And Joomla is just starting to get the ball rolling there. However, there are quite a few things that I really don't like about the way WordPress WordPress works. The code is substantially more complex than either uh, either Drupal or Joomla. For example, lots of the themes aren't set up for widgets, which would be modules in Joomla. If you want to have little blocks around the outside of your site, Joomla and Drupal 
both make it very easy. For Joomla, you just need one single line of code and the same with Drupal. For WordPress, it's a whole process. You have to start writing PHP functions, you have to create a new file. The process is pretty laborious compared to both Joomla and Drupal. That's just one example, but there's quite a few more. And perhaps the most infamous is the loop in WordPress. You remember back to the, the first slide I showed about Drupal? In order to get the Drupal content on the page, you had one line of code that was about 12 characters long. In order to get any content on a WordPress page, you need to use something called the loop. Basically, WordPress, people are debating whether WordPress is a CMS or not, and most people are leaning towards saying yes now, as it adds more features. But if you start to dig into the code of WordPress, it's still very much a blog based. And the loop is one really good example. Basically, as the name implies, it's designed to loop. So if you have a blog with 10 articles on the front page, it runs once, twice, three times, four times, five times. It keeps looping around until all the, all the, blog, all the blog posts are on the page. And inside that, you actually need to create the article. You need to put the title, the author, the date, the category, the content, the tags. It is substantially more complicated than either Joomla or Drupal. Um, have any of you guys dug into the, the loop as WordPress calls it? Okay. Um, you said it wasn't black magic for dealing with uh, <laughs> If anything, it would make you feel like it was a little bit of black magic when it comes to getting started in this, it perhaps might be WordPress. Um, you're probably better off starting with Drupal templates, uh, with Joomla templates as a, an easier thing to understand. The, uh, the WordPress code as uh, my Joomla template designer friend said, is actually the opposite of what his reputation would lead you to think. WordPress is actually more complicated in this area than either Joomla or Google. And the GPL causes quite a few problems. If you type in the name of pretty much any, uh, any, big, uh, any big WordPress company that releases their themes under GPL, you're going to find some Google advertisements like this. There's a big company called WooThemes, which is probably the biggest company in the, um, uh, the South African company from Cape Town. And they have lots of people advertising against their name, selling all of their themes this way. You can download their entire catalog for five bucks. There are lots and lots of people that are actually out there taking the products that the company sell and either releasing them or reselling them. And it, it's a pretty argumentative marketplace, I would say, certainly compared to Joomla. Um, you want to go ahead and type in WooThemes or another big WordPress company into, into Google, you'll find people messing with their business model redistributing their stuff. On the other hand, although the row in Joomla was pretty loud and pretty obnoxious uh, two or three years ago, we actually seem to have reached a fairly happy compromise when it comes to Joomla. You don't hear the template clubs arguing with each other too much. You don't hear them arguing with the main Joomla organization too much, and you don't seem to find the community arguing with them, with the template clubs too much. All of those things happen on a fairly regular basis with WordPress. 
One of the things I really like about Juma, at least in the uh, template marketplace, is that we seem to have reached uh, a nice balance, we're pretty successful, and it's, it's a pretty happy marketplace by and large. Um, Drupal doesn't have much, much of a marketplace. WordPress has a pretty boisterous and argumentative marketplace. Joomla is in a fairly good place in that regard. And compared to the lines of WordPress code that we saw earlier, the Joomla code snippets are actually pretty straightforward. Even in a really low level class when we do a training session, we get people to just open up the main Joomla template file and take a look. And we ask them, just using plain English, to figure out what different things do. They read down, uh, include component. Hmm. Even someone that knows no PHP whatsoever can figure out that loads the component. Include modules, name is left. And then we get the beginners in the class who sit there and go, huh, I know no code at all, but I can probably figure out that that loads the left-hand modules. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, when it comes to teaching people to build uh, to build work, uh, Joomla templates, we find it pretty easy. Um, it's not black magic. Um, we can normally teach people to remember and understand this code but well inside a morning. Um, one of the big advantages is Joomla's code simplicity. At this point, I might be able to get a few more answers out of you guys. Um, those of you guys that have been through the process of learning Joomla templates, uh, a thumbs up or thumbs down? Oh. Okay. <laughs> what would you say about the process of learning to design a Joomla template? <clears throat> Was it fairly straightforward? Was it a, a headache? Yeah. Okay. And you know code before. I don't need no code right now, but I can add. Oh, so you don't know code? No. But this snippet is this, I know. Cool. <laughs> we can, uh, rearrange them and download them. Yeah. And Simple. Yeah, but there are plenty of people that know zero PHP, but they still build Joomla templates. They just have to know the snippet, put the snippet in, and they're good to go. There are a couple of features that are common in Drupal and WordPress that are missing in Joomla. One is the ability to have child or sub-themes. There is a, a new feature in 1.6 that is kind of similar. Have any of you guys played with the uh, the templates in 1.6, the beta version. Um, you've seen the ability to make styles. What do you think? So if you want to have a, a red version of a template on one page, a blue version on another, it's now just a question of clicking a couple of buttons. It, this is something that used to be available <coughs> Uh, Drupal and WordPress only, that if you wanted a red version of a theme, a blue version, a green version, you could make what they call a child or, or sub-theme with just a couple of clicks. At the moment in 1.5, you don't have that. If you want to make a red version, you have to copy the entire template and put it in another file. You want to make a green version, you copy the whole thing again. And I've come across uh, some Joomla sites that people have built where in order to get a minute variation for, say, 20 pages, they have 20 different copies of the template. They need to make a fix, but they have to make it in 20 places. The, the whole thing is a headache if you want to have minor variations. Uh, Drupal and, Joomla, uh, Drupal and WordPress used to have an advantage. 1.6 will make it much easier. You can do it from the back end of Joomla inside the template manager. And 
not just the style, but also the design. It used to be very hard to target specific pages and specific categories. Both Drupal and WordPress would allow you to dig down and say, hey, I want to have a specific design for my blog. Or if I have uh, staff pages for our staff members, I want a different design. Drupal and WordPress both made it very easy to make a, a design for the staff category, a design for the blog category. Um, all you had to do, if you want to target a particular page, was make a copy and put the number of that page at the end. So if it was the second or third article you'd added to a Drupal site, you could just add hyphen three at the end. And that would be a design specifically for page number three. And uh, the, the new template design in 1.6 is going to help us get towards that. Um, but the Drupal system in comparison of targeting specific areas of the site is pretty nice. <coughs> I just want to say um, that oh. <laughs> in, in 1.6, um, in the least template, um, we started using uh, something similar. We had uh, a switch in, in the V's um, parameters so that you can uh, use either um, HTML5 or the standard XHTML. And um, that switch could easily be um, expanded uh, for. for yeah, different styles that you have in your template overrides. Um, I'll see if we can uh, get a blog post or some documentation about this. Oh, so it would be a little drop down in the back yeah. end. You yeah. could choose a blog view, a staff member view. Yeah, and together with uh, the, the template styles, uh, you could have, um, I don't know, one, one override that includes 10 different uh, um, styles and then um, you check on Parameter. And it's at the moment Drupal is doing all of this from the code. You actually have to dig into the code, but you're saying this could be done. Uh, it could be managed from the template manager. Yes. It, it's it's not perfect because uh, you could only um, yeah set it for a uh, menu item, uh, but it, it's still better than uh, the, the, the current system or the 1.5 system. Oh, so it's going, to, it's going to be based on, it's like the modules and templates at the moment, they're going to be assigned to menu links. Okay.
there's a default CSS file. Uh, those of you guys who have built a Joomla template might, may find yourself reusing the same code multiple times. You may have to do the, the date, the author, the read more, all of the little bitty pieces of a Joomla design. You end up repeating yourself quite often. Um, WordPress, I believe, comes with a, a default CSS file, so you can just concentrate on the bigger picture. You don't have to go down into the nitty gritty. Um, it produces some fairly long CSS files sometime in, in Joomla. You have to. Um, I believe the full list of default Joomla CSS is about 15 pages long of different uh, divs and things you can style. The ones you may use most often, um, I took this one from Milky Way, I believe there's about 40, 40 ones that are used commonly enough to go into Milky Way. Okay. Um, any questions when it comes to Joomla, Drupal, or WordPress? Themes and templates? for Drupal is whether you think there's going to be a, a huge explosion. You're, you're placing a bet essentially. Um, yeah. So if for these companies who are looking to start to build um, Drupal themes and sell them commercially, they're essentially taking a lot of their company's work and any business decision is a bet. Um, Drupal is an emerging market. Will it grow? That's <laughs> that's a business decision for you to have a guess at. Oh, soap is kind of. services, we provide training, it's fairly easy to skip between them, um, but making a real dent in more than one marketplace is hard. Um, any more questions? Go for it. How do you think that the commercial Drupal themes of the Joomla templates files will be received in the Drupal community? <laughs> There was a very nice post that uh, Dries made, Dries, the person that uh, was the founder and still runs a lot of the Drupal, uh, the Drupal side of things. He said that he would like people to learn the, the Drupal way. Um, and WordPress has quite a bit of a, a debate about the GPL, as we mentioned, and I think Drupal may well have quite a it's hard for me to make quite a few of these assumptions being on the open source matters board, so I'm going to try and be diplomatic. I suspect there may be, and I've seen signs of it already, 
uh, a bit of tug of war perhaps between the people that want to go more commercial and the people that don't. Um, so how will German companies be received? I, I suspect fairly well, but definitely some resistance. In general, which one is easier or hard? Thank you for coming, guys.